to head south for our second day and somehow my anchor got caught on a it's either like a mooring line or a cable that's not on the charts I have no idea but it looked like a mooring line because it had like the loop uh, so I don't know if they've got like un charted moorings around here or whatever but it made it so hard to pull a banker and then at the last second I saw it and I had Chelsea run and grab the boat hook so we could get it off the anchor and get it up because we were starting to drift into shore but we made it and we have wind we have like seven knots of wind I know it's not much but <laughs> it's something so we are underway Wes is underway Coffee is brewed. knots under motor we have literally no wind one knot and maybe a one and a half meter swell like three feet three to four feet so that's been a little nauseating because it's rolling inland or towards shore and we are trying to go south so, because we're under motor, it makes it a little more rolly than if we were to be able to catch some wind and tack our way down, but such as the east coast of the United States, it's kind of like notorious for being very difficult to sail south. We are probably going to make Jekyll Island for Brunswick, Georgia tonight, which is pretty good headway. I mean, we're going to do 55 nautical miles today, maybe 60. And then our next jump is to Jacksonville. Tomorrow there is going to be some rain, but it is supposed to be calm out here. So we're going to make a judgment call on whether or not we're going to do offshore or the ICW. We are entering the St. Simons Island Inlet. It is the inlet between Jekyll Island and St. Simons Island. And there's a little anchorage that's almost right after you get around the St. Simons Point and there's some marinas there. We did end up getting to sail. That was awesome. We had probably anywhere between 8 and 13 to 14 knots and a 2, anywhere between a 2 and a 4 foot swell. So great experience for us. Honestly, it felt really good. It felt really good to sail in those conditions. And, you know, a lot of the time I felt like having the sails out or the head sail out was easier than just motoring. To be completely honest, it's stabilized the boat quite a bit. And we went a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> Oh, 
It's beautiful out there. Look at that sunset. All right, so day three of our trip down to Florida. We're just kind of having a slow morning. Uh, we were trying to contact the marina right over here because we have to get some fuel and some ice, but they're not answering. So I think we're gonna stay in the ICW today anyways, just because there is supposed to be some possible weather. And then that way we can stop at a marina, fuel up, get our ice and anything else that we need and then keep going and then kind of assess what we wanna do after that. But it's just a beautiful morning right now. We're enjoying it, having our coffee and then we set off. It's about almost nine o'clock and we are leaving our little anchorage here in St. Simons and we're headed to Jekyll Island to load up on fuel and ice and then I think we're gonna shoot for Fernandina Beach today. It's really not that far and there are storms are supposed to come in tonight uh, around three o'clock or so and then they're supposed to hang around for quite a while so we're gonna find a little anchorage to ride it out in Fernandina and then we will push on once they pass. What a day. Our Predict Wind and Windy apps both told us it was going to be around seven knots of wind, barely anything, and maybe 10 knot gusts throughout the day, not even consistent. And we definitely clocked 22 knots. When we left this morning, we were like, maybe we'll just stay inland because we had to go and we had to fuel and we had to get ice. And the uh, the marina that we were next to wasn't open. And it said they were gonna be open at like 7 a.m., but it's a Sunday. So I assume they opened later, uh, but we left and we stayed on the ICW. We got our ice, we got our diesel, great morning beautiful out and we got around the southern tip of Jekyll Island and anybody who knows Jekyll Island you have to come out all the way to the coast and then you can come cut back in if you want to take the ICW well we got out there we had perfect wind we had 10 knots it was taking us right out the channel and we were like you know what let's go sailing 
Worst case scenario, we go around Cumberland Island and we call it a day. Or we could make it all the way to Jacksonville if we can keep these conditions, which it said should should sustain. So we get out there and maybe about halfway through our sail, wind starts to pick up. I start clocking 13, 15, but we're loving it because it's, there's like no swell. I mean, there was like maybe two foot of swell and the boat just glides right through it. And then we, we had already reefed our head sail. We were motor sailing because my main sheet basically got wrapped around the light on our mast and we couldn't raise the main. So we were just motor sailing with the head sail out and we were reefed. And then as soon as we clocked 15 knots, I double reefed. And then we were just cruising at like almost seven knots. And then the wind started to pick up the waves started to pick up. There was a storm coming from the west. I think it's from like from the west, from shore, offshore, and it just got nuts. I mean, 22 knots of wind was not even the, it wasn't even the, the, the difficult part dealing with the wind. It was the, diff, the difficult part was the current and the swell and the wind. So the wind and the swell were moving together and the current was moving against them. So it was creating a lot of chop, making bigger waves, bigger waves. And then as soon as we got to Fernandina, we decided to cut it short. And we were like, nope, we're not going all the way to Jacksonville. It's another three hours uh, and it's, we didn't want to do it in those conditions. The inlet here in Fernandina Beach is basically two rock walls that line the inlet all the way to where the shore meets the ICW or the islands. And that created some crazy chop. I mean, we had seven foot waves. I, w I, would, I wouldn't doubt it if, if they were bigger because the swell's coming from one direction, the current's going the other, and then the wind is also creating waves with the swell and it's all being funneled right into that small inlet. And we were surfing. I mean, it got crazy. And right before that, right before we hit the inlet, I'm like, there's no way I'm leaving the head sail out. So we let the head sail out, furled it in, hit the inlet, and then it just got wild. Found a little anchorage right when we dropped the hook, it starts raining. So the storm is just coming through. Wes is still out there. <laughs> so I am wishing him luck. He's moving on to Jacksonville. He probably made a good call um, for the size of his boat. I would not want, and the size of his engine, I would not want to try this inlet with his boat uh, and very, very little speed. It would be very dangerous. So he is moving on to Jacksonville. We will probably meet him there tomorrow and see what happens. Um, but I am so thankful that we made it here safely and I'm probably exaggerating on a lot of this, but everything is amplified when you're more new to things like this. And honestly, I think we did a great job. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. If you want to support our journey further, we have Sailing Intuition merch for sale and you can come join our intuitive family over on our Patreon page where we do ad-free and early access videos and so much more. Thank you for your support.